Hi, and welcome to today's WOW moment. My name is Nicole Wright, and I'm here to encourage you to tame your tongue. I want to open up with a word of prayer, just because whenever you're speaking about the word of the Lord, and whenever you're speaking about something that's potentially controversial, it's good to just open up with a word so that everybody's hearts and minds are clear. So let's look to the Lord, Father, in the name of Jesus. I thank you, and I praise you for this day, Lord God. I pray, Father, that you would cover us and keep us, Lord God. I pray that you would allow this word to convict our hearts Father God, and not just convict us, Lord God, but that it will cause a change in us. And even now, as I speak this word, I pray that you would allow it to be less of me and more of you. In Jesus' name, amen. So I said I wanted to talk to you about taming the tongue. The first thing I want to say is the Bible says to not conform to the patterns of this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And when you think about what the world says, the world says that you should tell people how you really feel. The world says that it's okay to not always have an encouraging word on your tongue. The world says that it's okay to curse and say this and say that and just pretty much talk to and treat people any way you want to. But I'm here to tell you that the Bible says that there is pow the power of life and death in the tongue. The Bible also says that the tongue is like a sword that it can chop down. And so when you really begin to think about that, and when you think about the word also telling us that we should encourage and that we should, the words of our mouth and our actions should glorify God, we have to really think about what am I doing and what am I saying to either kill what God is trying to do with my life, to raise up what God is trying to do in my life, or to help others and encourage others. So often, you know, we fall into the, the, the pattern of, you know, being argumentative and having disputes and things like that. And not that life doesn't happen and things come up and you have disagreements, but how do you handle yourself in the midst of those disagreements when someone's really getting on your nerves or when your kids are acting up or when your spouse did that thing that was really, really messed up? You know, how do you respond? Do you respond with a word that is hurtful? Do you respond with a word that is graceful or merciful? You know, what is your response? How are you speaking when you're worried about something, when something comes up that you can't handle? Do you say all is lost? Like, what are you speaking out of your mouth? And the Bible really talks about the fact that we can't tame the tongue. The reality is you, me, we can't tame our own tongue. So what we have to do is we have to learn to give it to God. We have to learn to ask him, like it says in Psalm 139, Lord, please set a guard over my lips. But it, I really want to take it a step beyond that because even more than having him set a guard over the, our lips, the reality is it says in the word that out of the mouth flows the, the things of the heart. So really, it's a heart condition, right? Our words start in our heart. The Bible says that we need to seek out God and we need to ask him for a clean heart. And so when we begin to seek him and when we begin to ask him to cleanse our heart, what will happen as our heart gets cleansed, our speech will get cleansed. So as he deposits grace and mercy and forgiveness and healing into our hearts and peace into our hearts, that is what will flow out of our mouth. See, what happens is the, the things that come of our, out of our mouth go from our heart to our mind to our mouth. And so when, we, when our heart is clean and when our mind is renewed, we are able to, to get out of our mouths the things that God would have us to get out. It doesn't mean that people aren't going to get on your nerves. It doesn't mean that you're not going to feel that thing where you just want to rise up and you want to go off. What it means is that the, 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 the transformation in your heart, the transformation in your mind will cause you to filter out those things. See, the Bible also says that you should be slow to speak, slow to get angry, and quick to listen. See, when you're slow to speak, that gives you an opportunity to process and really think about the words that you're going to say. When you're slow to get angry, it means that you're not going to respond in a manner that is going to be hurtful to the person where you're going to say things that you regret. Because the thing is, when you say things, once you release a word, you've already spoken it and you can't pull that word back. Yeah, you may be able to apologize for it. You may be able to even clean it up and help that person understand what you really meant. But the fact of the matter is that word is out there. And even sometimes when you clean it up, that person still remembers the original word. I know that's been my case in my, in my situation where people have said things to me, even though they clean it up, I still remember the original word. And the same thing happens when I say things to people. When you speak harshly and when you speak without having that moment to really say lie and think about what you want to say, sometimes you say the wrong thing. 
And let's be honest, you know, you say these things and we have a tendency to say, oh, that's not what I meant. But the reality is in that moment, that's what you meant. Because that word came from an emotional place. That word, that word came out of the hurt or, or whatever the thought was that, that came into your mind because of what they did or how they looked at you or whatever the case may be. So in that moment, it is what you meant. But what we need to get, get to is a point is, you know, in the moment, that's what I meant, but it wasn't the right thing to say. It wasn't the right thing to do. And the reality is that overall, I love you. I care about you. I want the best for you. And so what we have to do is we have to learn to have our heart changed, to, to, to transform our mind, to come into a place where we can begin to slowly speak. When we're arguing with our spouse, when we're get frustrated with the things that our children do, instead of just lashing out and saying the first thing that comes to mind, pause. Pause and take a moment to really think about how, will, how can I educate them or let them know that they hurt me but still honor God in my speech. So my prayer for you today is that you would allow God to transform your heart that you would allow him to renew your mind so that those two can work together as a filter to, to mind what comes out of your mouth. If you've, incur if you've brought anybody down with your words today, if you brought your own self down with your words, I encourage you to apologize. And remember, there is death and life in the power of the tongue. Speak life to your situations, to your family, to your friends, to those you encounter. Speak life, not death. And as hard as it is, I encourage you, I encourage you not to, I'm, I'm like sometimes the biggest pessimist, pessimist. I can see the bad in everything. And I am asking God to work in me and change that because I want to be able to be optimistic. I don't want to speak death over my situations. I don't want to speak loss over my life. I want to speak prosperity. And so we have to be intentional about all of those things. So today, be intentional about how you use your words. And I pray that this message bless you. Have a great day, and I hope you enjoyed this wild moment.